and we will upload the presentations that will be done as well. Don't worry, everything will be available. So we want to invite you all to introduce yourself, uh, say hello on the chat. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you have all questions and comments are welcome and please use the Q and A uh, session. We will do as much as, it, as we can to give you a response uh, throughout the conversation. Without uh, any further ado, I'm going to invite uh, Carolina Salgado, who is the uh, Presidential Counselor for Childhood and, and Adolescents uh, in Colombia, so that uh, she can uh, give us some uh, welcoming words. Carolina, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ariel. It is a pleasure to be here with you. I want to uh, extend, uh, uh, I want to greet you uh, and to greet the, the team of the Inter American Dialogue, Constanza Jerez from Niñez Ya. It is a pleasure to have you here in this space. Uh, uh, welcoming, uh, welcome to, to Tatiana. Uh, and to those of you who are joining us from the different teams of the national entities, the territorial governments, to, to those actors, uh, important allies that we have in this uh, process, which are the social managers of the departments and of the different municipalities. And of course, to the audience that we have quite diverse, and there's something that we have in common, and, and they're actually very committed to uh, to the playtime. I want to uh, share with you from the presidential uh, councilor. We have assumed a very important challenge, which is to which is to promote these actions in favor of uh, childhood in our country, and uh, and the work as uh, as you will know, or or our compass has always. Uh, have always been the policies of the early childhood. And now that we're moving on to the childhood and adolescence so that we can continue with the vision of policy uh, and comprehensive development. From the beginning of this government, I also want to highlight that it's been our interest to delve into the understanding of what uh, of what the playtime implies for childhood. It has been really important and relevant for us. And in this process, we have found huge opportunities that have uh, brought a lot of uh, outcomes. And, and, and this has raised uh, issues of interest that, that should be shared with you in, in terms of highlighting uh, uh, the playtime as a right of children. So from all the different perspectives, we're highlighting this and on and uh, the playtime is like an activity for childhood. We know that this is at uh, the playtime as a tool for learning and also a playtime as a mechanism to uh, promote the protection environments, which has been the emphasis of our most one of the emphases that we have addressed in the territory, when I talk about this uh, protector uh, settings or environments, we're also referring to a mechanism to prevent violence, to strengthen relations. And the uh, playtime, uh, it seems to be a, a re-encounter with nature, which is part of the development of uh, boys and girls. These vast majority uh, uh, variety of possibilities have allowed us to identify with the inter-American dialogue with the Lego Foundation, the opportunity to generate uh, uh, gathering and conversation spaces about, around this topic and uh, the diversity of uh, um, on the different uh, understandings. We're also considering the different postures or positions, uh, actions for um, uh, the different actors. And to highlight that uh, multiple uh, um, approaches that we have in terms of the different uh, experiences which are which are based on the playtime and the day-to-day -day life of children in the different territories at their homes and their edu educational spaces in the different environments where the where playtime is actually really important so 
I would like to express my gratitude to the part for the participation today. And we're going to uh, start by sharing with you a, a three working spaces around uh, the playtime in Colombia. So with this, we want to identify aspects that are essential to keep on studying, to keep on uh, working in that and the strengthening of actions that we're, that we're conducting in the different territories. But we have uh, important uh, opportunities to continue with our work to position that understanding around the playtime as a right uh, of children. So you received the invitation and we shared that the purpose of this first meeting, which was to socialize and to debate about the progress of policies, programs, the different initiatives that, that promote playtime among child, uh, children. And for this, and therefore it was, we have invited the representative from two important institutions who will be joining us in the different presentations today. And they're going to give us uh, they will present and they will explain um, the overview of uh, the playtime. We're going to have a Constanza. She's from Niñeta. She's going to, to give us some reference about the playtime in the different territories. And uh, we will also have uh, the opportunity to uh, hear another entity to look at the different uh, panoramas that they have to offer. So to wrap up, thank you for being here. Thank you for positively responding to this invitation and for being part of this session around a topic that is so relevant for everyone and to express my gratitude and that commitment to the country uh, with uh, children and adolescents and teenagers. And, and we want to invite you to, to bring this uh, commitment to the different specific actions to motivate and to allow uh, 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 the playtime to be enjoyed among uh, the childhood. Thank you, Carolina, and it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor to to work with the councillor's office in this meeting and to express. We want to express our gratitude for the uh, support of the Lego Foundation that made this possible. Without any further ado, I. Uh, so the idea is to have uh, two presentations that will give us a framework a general framework on what is the situation in Colombia in terms of the playtime regarding public policies, programs, initiatives of the civil society uh, and the playtime itself by kids. So for that purpose, we're gonna have two presentations. The first one will, will be done by Angela Costanza Jerez. She's the coordinator of uh, Niñez Ya. And then we will hear from Juliana Uribe Villegas, director of uh, Mobilizatorio, and Tatiana Forero, that the assistant director, uh, they will also participate with their presentation. Then we will have a space uh, to exchange and to have a discussion. So without any further ado, Constanza, the floor is yours. While I greet you, I'm going to share my screen. Thank you so much for 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 that introduction, uh, thank you to the uh, to the advisor's office, uh, and thank you to Lego for inviting us to participate to participate this in such an important time uh, for us because we can share this information that we've been working on for four years now. From Niñez, I am sharing my screen. Uh, can you see it? I don't know how can. I don't know, how can I uh, have the presentation mode? On the bottom part, there's a button. Can you see it? Mode, perfect. Okay, so I want to uh, reiterate my gratitude for allowing us to share the information that we're working on from Niñeja. As I mentioned, as the councilor mentioned, in Colombia, we have done a lot of progress and with uh, the playtime, this is a right and this is a human development uh, factor, but it's been underestimated. 
Very quickly, uh, what's Niñez Ya? It's a coalition of more than 100 organizations and uh, civil society networks. For four years, uh, we have been working in this group to include in the different government programs, uh, in the different popular uh, positions. And, and, and this, uh, this is something that is very essential without this, we, include, we have more than 100 organizations from the civil society, and there are 17 organizations that you're, I'm sure you're familiar with. The, we have people from different countries. Several of them are operating in other countries. And we also have a chapter in Antioquia, which is a provincial department in Colombia that is really important for us. We, uh, the capital city is Medellin. When we have 15 organizations well-renowned in Colombia. Uh, for the work that they've been conducting in the different sectors. These are the top uh, uh, topics related to childhood, uh, health and nutrition, initial education, preschool, basic and middle, middle education, healthy environment, uh, playtime, participation, family strengthening for care and, and uh, protection against uh, violence, adolescence in conflict with the, with the law, and the culture of peace, reconciliation, and coexistence. The fifth of our, the fifth one is uh, the playtime. And there are others that are also important, which has, which are public policies and investment. They're included. So every time we mention them, we always resort uh, to what we have in terms of the policies. Why is it included in the agenda? This is something mentioned by Carolina, and it's the fact that playtime is a right is a right that is set out in the convention of uh, of ch of the children's rights it's in our constitution and in our policies our laws that govern us in terms of the guarantee of the rights of children so this is for us really important to and we need to track that right and to make sure how it is being guaranteed but it is also a human development as indicated uh, by the investigation that have indicated how they contribute to make sure that he, that uh, children and adolescents and adults uh, develop uh, physical, social strengths, cognitive uh, processes. These uh, we have we, a recent investigation made by the Universidad Nacional and uh, one of the corporations uh, that has uh, de uh, developed this process. They do follow up to to the kids who go to the different libraries for many years or kids who cannot develop these skills. What's been the situation? This has been a right that has been vulnerated due to the little time that kids and adolescents have uh, for the enjoyment of, uh, of the playtime and the lack of programs and spaces and the little valuation that we're providing it is very common to hear adults say that don't waste time playing. I mean, we want to change this perspective among adults uh, to show the importance of, of the playtime, other evidence that has proven what 30% uh, of, um, of uh, boys and 20% of girls from three to five years old, they practice, they practice activities related to playtime. So this is, this is, this is something that will change radically, but this is something that we experienced uh, with the pandemic. This is from Encin, which is the which is the which is uh, an entity in Colombia. Uh, uh, this is some. Uh, this survey was not done last year. We're expecting to see what will be what will be the the result of the survey that we are conducting. And what are they doing with the time? Sixty two. 0.3% of, of girls and 61.5% of boys are in the same ages. They are spending a lot of time. And this is uh, improved with the pandemic. Another evidence in the corporation that I was mentioning before in 2016, there was there was a consultation uh, made in the different uh, in the different uh, municipalities, and they indicated that 21 percent of the families consulted devoted one hour or two hours to spending time with their kids playing. Why? Because they were busy. Because they have domestic uh, duties. They were using their spare time uh, in in uh, technology uh, networks and lack of spaces. Other evidence that has proven this, and I'm gonna move on to the topic that, that we want to address specifically in the territories in Colombia. There are uh, 300 uh, places which are uh, devoted to the playtime. So the, and they're only covering one 
0.94% of the of the um, underage population in Colombia. The in the pandemic, they didn't have uh, possibilities to play. So we've been doing a direct consultation with kids and families. And what they what we found is that due to the closure of schools and, and parks, they were not playing. Uh, the devotion to domestic works, the, the, the lack of uh, space in their homes. Uh, uh, there are apartments that are really small. They, they couldn't play. And the prohibition of adults. In some conversations that we had in the different spaces during the isolation, uh, our kids, uh, were especially those uh, who live in, in very small places, that they didn't have the possibility that, they, that, it, that if they played, um, they had to pay a penalty, uh, which is which is equivalent to four dollars or three dollars, uh, and they were penalized. And some people uh, didn't even have uh, the money to pay for a room. So, and due to the violence, uh, they were not allowed to go out to the different places and the insecurity of the public parks, which are also used by uh, for illegal activities. And uh, we have also seen that uh, only four uh, specializations, uh, we're talking about superior education, uh, teach things related to playtime, and they do it from a didactic approach. But we need to uh, we need to recognize the playtime as a right and as a factor for human development. We will. And uh, what have we seen? Uh, there is a low inclusion in the agenda of the of the of the politicians. Although the National Development Plan included explicitly the playtime, uh, and this is something that has to be uh, applauded, and we that this uh, government explicitly indicated that this is a, a human development factor. The programs. Uh, uh, of the government, of the different um, uh, candidates to, to major's office or, or governor's office, they didn't follow that. Uh, we also urged uh, the DMP uh, to work uh, together to provide this type of information. And once they become, uh, or they take their office, they, they didn't do it. So what did we find in order to zoom in this information, which is really important? When we had the, when these persons were candidates uh, for the different processes, that was in 2019. We have 32 departments in the in the in the country and, two, and 32 capital cities. So we selected 103 candidates from these 64 territorial entities that were uh, that were uh, leading the the service to determine what were their programs in terms of government. So we submitted uh, submitted a, a questionnaire with uh, the issues and one of them is uh, the playtime to determine how uh, what were the programs that they had in terms of the commitment that they have to do so we found that there was a middle uh, inclusion of playtime 88 percent of the candidates to the major offices included certain programs related to playtime and 60 percent of the candidates to governor's office also included uh, playtime programs in their in their in their uh, processes. But what happened and among the different proposals that we had, they were basically related to uh, inter, uh, uh, competencies among the different schools and universities to create more spaces. Uh, there is no space for a playtime, but that was okay, but they still needed the, the part related to the playtime as a right and, and as a factor of human development. So when we get to analyze the, the territorial development plans, which is uh, what the governor uh, elected needs to have. We also do the selection of the 32 departments, uh, the governors and 32 capital cities. Uh, there was one capital excluded, Armenia, because when we closed the exercise, Armenia had not approved the development plan, despite the fact that the, that the government had or had uh, given the possibility to increase those times in order to approve uh, the, the due to the pandemic. So we found that 6.24 of the development plans uh, of the governor's office and 16.3 of the of the plans of the 31 capital cities had strategies, indicators, and uh, related to the playtime, and that was very low. And only 11.1 .1 approached a playtime. Um, uh, 
as as a, as a development factor. We have a map here. I hope you can see it. Uh, this is information that will be uh, given to you. If you want to zoom in on the things or the information that we're presenting, you can see which are the, the departments and the capital cities where we need to do major effort to make sure that playtime gains a better level and to favor children. So what we found is that most of our our governors have a reduced concept of the playtime. They basically see it as, a, as something related to competences, but they're not resorting to the right or to the possibility to develop their competences among the socio-emotional skills. And there is and there's a competitive concept that prevails. So we have here a series of recommendations that uh, we can give you very quickly so that we can delve into this. So first of all, um, these are actions that uh, should not wait. We need to apply the guidelines in the public policy on, on playtime and recreation, the constitution, and the code of childhood and adolescence, the policy that we have from zero to uh, one had to include, include uh, playtime as an important element. And we hope that they can follow these guidelines. We also propose to guide the inclusion of the fundamental process in the development plans and these, and it is, it, it should be include resources in order to do it and strategies with the indicators to, to be uh, followed up to strengthen the, the playtime promotion strategies from the different entities, from the territorial entities to make sure that it can reach different spaces. Likewise, to include questions and and the service that are being done in the in the country, so that we can so that we can determine what's the state of the art and of the playtime in the country, and to monitor it to make sure that we have a better understanding of of the playtime as a as a right uh, in in schools and in the different uh, uh, spaces. Likewise, to define the indicators in order to be able to evaluate the incidents that playtime has on the on the development of children to reinforce the guidelines in, in basic and preschool uh, to make sure that this is a priority to promote as well within the curriculum of uh, higher education in, in specializations, not only in the undergraduates programs uh, to provide the more education on playtime. We need to delve into this and to make sure that this becomes a human uh, development. We know about the, the investigation in Colombia. Now that we're going back to the, uh, back to schools, um, in the different uh, sessions and those uh, who are uh, re returning to their schools, it is important to have interaction for them at school. And then finally, to generate a citizen pedagogy on the importance of uh, free and spontaneous playtime. Uh, the usual thing is for adults to think it's that we're wasting, that they're wasting time and that's not the case. We need to make sure that people understand that we can change this. And so these are some final messages that we have uh, provided by the, uh, by uh, Carolina, playing is, is a very interesting protection factor for children. They, it, it, it really, um, they are protected from violence and uh, these play, uh, these playgrounds are really interesting, but there's an, and they're also scenario for learning. So it is important to, but to create more spaces in the different parts of the country, there are only 300. Uh, we need to see if after the, the isolation and, and the lockout, uh, we, they are still open. Thank you. Thank you, Costanza. That was, that was a, a very interesting presentation in terms of the effort information that you shared and the proposals. I think that the panorama that you're presenting is serves like a baseline thinking uh, in the future, thinking of the future, the amount of playtime and and what is it that we're doing in terms of public policy. I think that this has been very useful. Again, the presentation is going to be available on the web page. I'll pass the floor to Juliana Uribe Villegas and Tatiana Forero from Mobilizatorio so that they can uh, do their presentation. 
ecosystem parents is to understand who are working on this the pre we need to build on what has been built so this is uh, this is the mapping process that we have uh, uh, that we undertook before moving on to the specific results i want to tell you the process that we followed it was uh, divided in, in four phases. Uh, the first one was to identify the issue or the problem. Oftentimes, uh, there are many organizations working in this regard, but uh, but they're not they're not identified. They're not uh, known. They do not know among each other, and and that's the initial problem that we wanted to solve to make sure that they were they became visible, understanding which are the actors or who are working in on on this area in Colombia, so that we could generate uh, alliances and collect them to connect among each other. So that's when we established we, we did a first uh, mapping of the Colombian ecosystem on the different sectors, audiences, actors, and geographical level levels at the local and national level and uh, the idea and the solution to to implement the mapping we created a form with 18 questions key, key questions with categories that we wanted and that in our opinion were important to map how the playtime is in Colombia and then we once we created this mapping which was basically a, an open code a platform with a questionnaire that uh, uh that, uh, that we will share with you at the end of this presentation, the organizations could, could provide their information, uh, how we socialized uh, this platform and that instrument, which was the questioner, was uh, through the alleys, uh, uh, like, uh, like the different foundations or our, our, our social networks. That's how we uh, socialized uh, this information to, to make sure that uh, we could uh, map uh, which were the different organizations and institutions were working around the playtime and the final outcome is that in 2020 we mapped 293 organizations and this is uh, more or less what I want to characterize those uh, 293 organizations to tell you what they are what they do and before uh, moving on to to give you the specific results I want to tell you uh, there are several categories uh, that we asked, but there are four main ones that we wanted to understand on this mapping and on who were working on the playtime aspect, which were the organizations and where are they, which regions are they located. The second one was where the environment where they were working, if they were working with public incidents, public communication, or if they were working on social transformation in different uh, thematics. And then lastly, if they if they were also working uh, from the change of public policy. Another key question was to understand which were uh, the topics of interest that they, that uh, were that were developed around the country, and and which were the audiences of these organizations or projects. So, with this in mind, uh, I will explain which are the results of our mapping. The first thing we wanted to understand the what was the the level of operation were they if they were operating nationwide or locally. 43% of the organizations of the 293, they operate locally. Then at a national level, we have 25% and at a regional level, 20%. We also wanted to understand and the work that these organizations do with uh, the playtime, we wanted to understand what was the status of the project that they had. So we identified that 68% of the organizations having uh, these type of projects, they already had a, a specific plan, uh, a project, and it was underway. And 32% already had an initiative or an idea that was uh, materializing at this time. So this is something that we did in 2020. We believe that a, a huge opportunity will be to reactivate this mapping and to understand which are the outcomes, the learning, what's the knowledge at a national level um, have they obtained uh, as part of the organizations uh, that uh, work uh, around the playtime. So this will be a very important opportunity to with this mapping that we can still, this is, uh, this is open uh, work and we can reactivate it. This is... Uh, where is the location of the of the different groups uh, working uh, around uh, the playtime on the right? 
The red part is what we have are the areas where we identified more work related to, to playtime and the blue part are the ones uh, that least uh, address this. So this is what we found from our mapping uh, in the socialization and amplification. Uh, we we couldn't uh, we couldn't get to areas on the east of the country, but this is the information that we found that based on the mapping of the three the two hundred ninety three organizations. It is important to mention that there are departments in the central and north part of the country that are, are doing a lot of work on regarding playtime. Bogota is uh, where we found that then followed by um, Antioquia and Cauca. Uh, because they're, they're uh, capital uh, cities and the uh, departments where we found that there is less implementation of uh, playtime is Putumayo, Aupes, Pichada, and Guainia. That on the map of the different uh, uh, organizations. We also wanted to understand how are these organizations being funded? Uh, this is one question that only 119 uh, uh, responded to. And uh, we identified that the vast majority of the efforts of these projects are, are funded by, by the private sector. And, and 39 organizations are, are totally or partially funded by the public center. And we also identified that Antioquia, uh, Bolivar, Santander, and Cundinamarca have they have uh, they have more efforts and 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 funding as well then we have something uh, really important talking about the mapping how is it that we can uh, reactivate the mapping to strengthen it how can it, we manage all the different learnings in the areas where they are implementing the playtime how can we bring this knowledge to, to other regions of the country where, where, the, where the work and the right of childhood to play uh, is not so strong? We wanted to understand, we identified how this organization is working with uh, how much we wanted to, uh, we wanted to know how much uh, uh, they were playing on a day-to-day -day basis. And, the, and what we found is that in general terms, all the different organizations work in depth with uh, the playtime in more than 80%. Per so these, this is a, a very significant uh, number because uh, the, the playtime is one of the, the function, the, one of the core um, activities of these organizations. We wanted to understand and that was one of the questions. How are they working? What are the topics that they're addressing uh, with, with tools around the playtime? And uh, uh, the first one is education, the organizations in terms of they're using uh, strictly this type of uh, playtime opportunities. Other topics that we have identified is for example, uh, we're, uh, there's a lot of uh, work doing uh, around the uh, uh, citizen appropriation, sports and recreation, environment, early childhood, and human rights. As you can see, this is you can see that education prevails, but there are other areas in the countries where where we can have uh, this type of playtime activity. These are some of the categories that we identified where less work is conducted. But these are the ones that we identified where, where, where they involve uh, playtime less, but there are more organizations that see these uh, topics as an opportunity to be included. Tourism, uh, digital literacy, financial education, gender approach, uh, de emotional development, uh, leadership and entrepreneurship, uh, just to tell you some of the categories having less uh, role uh, in terms of playtime. We also wanted to understand that to whom were these uh, targeted, uh, who will benefit from, uh, from the playtime um, concept in the country. The main ones uh, who benefit are uh, boys and girls. We also have uh, uh, teenagers uh, and adolescents. And this is the level of audience that uh, these organizations are, are reaching. We also found that uh, that it has been optimized with uh, to work with the victims of violence, with ethnical communities, uh, disabled com uh, persons with disabilities. Uh, but these are but the but children and adolescents are the priority. And I'm going to these are some open questions that we had so that you could understand. Uh, how is it that they see or what has been the 
the uh, main conclusions of working around playtime. And I'm going to share some of these questions. And uh, this is uh, do, do we, and we are incorporating the playtime within the activities as a pedagogical tools. Others uh, think that this is a, that this is a catharsis for children to diamond to dynamize the pedagogical processes. These are some of the phrases that we heard uh, that we heard from the different organizations working uh, on areas related to the playtime. And we wanted to uh, what. We also asked that how can they apply uh, playtime nationwide? How can they apply or how can we strengthen new opportunities to work around playtime? We have a few. So I'm going to summarize uh, these just to give you four major characteristics. Something that is really content, constant is that playtime is an opportunity for uh, pedagogy and to learn and to and to learn from different levels from an, an individual level. Uh, there are specific examples to learn uh, activities, knowledge, but also as an opportunity of social and collective learning. There are some examples of how can we use or how can we contribute from the playtime to to resolve collective problems. And another valuable is being able to leverage on the playtime for learning purposes as a window to understand other, other cultures. So this is a first category, another opportunity for the playtime in, in terms of the social transformation. This is something that, that they uh, indicated. And uh, how can the playtime become a bridge to generate connections, trust. And this is something that, that we have uh, been working on. And this is something that we see uh, the, the playtime is interesting to create bridges and to, court, to work uh, uh, in coordination with other groups. And then it, it seems to be a, a possibility to, to, for social wellness and, and mental health. This is what the organizations have indicated. And, and just to wrap up with the results that we have found, the mapping, the, we wanted to understand what the, this organization uh, believed that was missing to, to think about the playtime. The first thing they identified, those of us who, who work around playtime nationwide have indicated that the more uh, specialized uh, or scenarios uh, or spaces are needed to learn to keep on implementing, implementing the process. We command this type of uh, um, meetings because they contribute to the need that we have uh, found in the, in the mapping. The second one are the is the possibility to, to establish national and international alliances in order to uh, understand, to implement uh, collectively in order to, to uh, benefit uh, from all the opportunities pro that provided by the playtime. And as I mentioned before, how to bring this knowledge uh, to other regions in the country where apparently uh, no their, their uh, playtime is not being implemented. And then lastly, uh, a need that was uh, uh, more, uh, more trained personally in order to implement with uh, methodologies based on the playtime on the different thematics that I mentioned that, that go beyond the education aspect. And to wrap up, these are some of the important conclusions that I would like to share with you. Uh, of all these mapping, in Colombia, we're working around the playtime. And this is something that we're doing beyond the educational sector. And this is, this is a huge opportunity that uh, we have. Uh, as I mentioned, we have seen uh, uh, aspects related to culture, citizenship. A second major conclusion is that there are zones in the country where apparently there's inequality and this exercise of the and the different organizations that can promote uh, the playtime and the day to day day activities, so we can have opportunities as uh, uh, possibilities for actions. And then, lastly, the playtime can be seen as a, co a cohesive bridge to generate more connections to uh, to reach initiatives and diverse thematics in the different territories in Colombia, and also as a way to learn collectively in the country in all the different thematics that are uh, where we're working to. I'll pass the floor now to Juli. 
Thank you, Tati. Yes, uh, we want to we want to invite you to to register to join this mapping to make sure that the initiative that you are working on and uh, within your organization is part of the mapping, so that we can feed that the mapping. Uh, we also want you to share this uh, QR code of, or the or the web uh, page of with your allies with other people who are working uh, on playtime, so that we can so that we can feed this tool that will all is open for everyone as you can see and then finally if you want to uh, be in contact with the initiative if you want to uh, add as an organization or an alley or if there are joint opportunities to work that we can do from uh, these diagnoses that was that came up of the mapping and in the different topics that we were discussing of uh, public policies cultural change and and ecosystem work you can also contact us and and uh, in lab de juego at mobilizatorio.org and all the information on the initiative is sumateljuego.com. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. We're very pleased for, uh, for uh, sharing the information and we're attentive uh, to any questions for, that we can, that we can uh, resolve at this time. Ariel, the, the floor is yours again. Thank you, Juliana, Tatiana. Very, very motivating the presentation that you just did. And I think that uh, I think that being able to present data information in terms of what is going on is very informative. So there are several questions uh, um, people that uh, would like to gain access to the list of organizations or uh, to contact this. Everything is available on the on your page, right? Yes, I just uh, wrote down the, the link and it's uh, the one that was shared by Julia at the end and I just shared in the in the chat uh, and you can gain access to, to the information of those who, who are mapped uh, as well. We're going to have a, a, a session to 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 have a, a com we're going to have at some time for the for the conversation. I have a question. Thinking of if uh, if the interest and the programs uh, to promote the playtime um, are move on, what can we expect? in terms of impacts or effects on childhood and the development of children. How are we going to notice in four or five years that in if there is success uh, to achieve that uh, attraction, what will be the effect that we will be able to see among children and how can we measure it? How can we know that in fact, this vision has the results uh, of uh, what we're looking for? I think, uh, I think this is a quite general uh, Constanza. I think that one way to measure uh, what's the the effect of a uh, of the playtime will be has been shown in the isolation during the pandemic. Uh, now that the kids are going back, uh, kids were not interacting. They didn't know how to play because they had to sit down uh, to see each other because they couldn't touch each other and they had to make up uh, games uh, or play or that. And, and therefore they had to start uh, playing differently. We're also seeing with the different organizations that, that there are contrary effects uh, compared to what you can expect when children play because they're not playing what, what we were showing uh, recently with the information that we found with the different uh, organization is that one, apart from the education, apart from health, one of the issues 
uh, of the rights that were affected during during the lockout was precisely the playtime because there was no possibility for them to play in their apartments that are really small. They didn't have the possibility to to go outside and play uh, in the different in the areas where they lived and they couldn't go to the parks. So that so we're we're seeing a we're seeing a contrary. Um, Effect. There's a psychologist here in Colombia who works on on play issues, and he says that uh, that a kid uh, that doesn't play is complex because it helps you motivate so many things on your on your brain. Uh, they become more creative when they start imagining uh, imagining this type of uh, type of games uh, because they create the uh, uh, characters, situations. They establish their own rules. Uh, uh, we can play from from uh, from within certain period of time, so they reach agreements in order to make that uh, playtime special. And what these psychologists uh, say and the different studies, this type of engagement allow kids to develop those skills to interact with others, in you know, order even to know their own skills to to determine how much uh, they can do and i think that this is going to improve the level and the and the and at the end of the day this will contribute to the human capital of a country it is also important to follow those lines not uh, just to focus on the competitive uh, game which is what we saw uh, that they were promoting through through the different government uh, programs but to Establish these ways uh, that you were finding and that you were uh, showing with all the mapping that was done in Mobilizatorio, which is something that is being done by other organizations to make sure that the playtime is seen differently and not as it is seen um, by the by the different um, government programs. Something what you just mentioned with your question, I don't know if you were expecting me to respond. I think I think that you've uh, referred to the different spaces or 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 um, the dimensions where we can get uh, an impact. How are the question is how can we observe and how can we monitor th through time if we have the systems in place of that will allow us to confirm that we're heading on the right uh, direction. But I think that this is obviously an important challenge. Tatiana, Juliana, what do you think about this? We, I want to share uh, that we're working in the measurement of that in this new uh, stage of uh, add uh, to the game in line with what uh, Constanza was mentioning about the effects of the pandemic on the social emotional skills of uh, children. We're also working on a test uh, that is uh, an investigation in order to understand how uh, the playtime has influenced the, the development of all these social emotional skills and how the lack of uh, playtime has also affected uh, this during the pandemic. So at this time, I'm going to share on the chat uh, the test that is called the Juega Que Sana. Um, yeah, through around this strategy, we're compiling stories directly from parents and caretakers. And we're also, and through this survey, we're compiling a lot of information so that we can start measuring uh, what's the situation what we have uh, and what will be the effect uh, of not uh, of not having this playtime, we want to identify specifically where are we seeing challenges in the social emotional development, and to suggest this community of parents or caretakers and this educational community to specific tools with the playtime that will allow uh, developing the skills where we may find that that. Uh, we need to do further work uh, at a country level. So I think that the important thing about this message is that this is something that can be measured. Part of the measurement and the diagnosis is to do it directly with the parents, the caretakers, and the educational ecosystem uh, that uh, where work has been done uh, as uh, we observed in the mapping and which 
and that there is a lot of evidence on how does the playtime contribute to the development of these activities and that we need to implement those tools that are proven in Colombia. So I don't know, Tati, if you want to say anything else. Uh, yes, a couple of things. And, and based on what you were asking, how will this be seen if we keep on strengthening uh, this? I would say that that, that it will be very specific. Uh, we will be educating uh, future citizens, uh, professional citizens with diverse uh, skills. As Holy Man mentioned, there is a lot of evidence in terms of how can these uh, strengthen very spe specific skills, not just to have uh, the knowledge or to repeat or to or to have the, the academic knowledge, but skills uh, from a cognitive perspective, creative perspective, physical perspective, so I think that this is this is this could be the future with the city says uh, with multiple skills in order to address the challenges that they will face. And just to add, apart from how to measure, this is something that uh, Holly already indicated. And thinking of the uh, of the um, of the presentation, uh, I think that one way to measure will be uh, through specific programs or to determine how many public policies are in place, which are the which are the strategies that are led by the public sector. I think that could this could be a possible indicator of how to measure if we're if we're doing something uh, interesting. I was looking at. There are several questions on the on the Q and A session, and some of them have been uh, responded uh, to or replied to in, in writing. Many of the questions have to do ident have to do, do with identifying specific cases of uh, of uh, playtime. I want to tell you that this is the first of the meetings that we will be. Uh, Holding and in the and in the following meeting, which uh, we hope uh, to have uh, by February, we will be delving into lessons learned of uh, specific cases. I think that this is a very good symptom that that there is desire that there are many questions on on the how things are done, and not only the what. So I think so. We will uh, keep in responding uh, some of the questions in writing, but but I cannot. I'm inspired uh, by by one of the questions, and perhaps, uh, and and perhaps to to deviate you a little bit from the topic. Just to suggest, uh, there are two questions that I have uh, inspired uh, by what you have mentioned and, and from some of the questions asked uh, by, the, by the audience. The first point, you mentioned the cultural change among adults to make sure that the playtime can gain the relevance and dimension that it deserves. This was suggested in terms of, of uh, accepting that the playtime is something serious and it is not a waste of time. So the first uh, question is, one of the hardest things uh, is to change the culture and the different attitudes. Do you do you have any thoughts about this? Do you have any messages uh, that uh, that could be useful for everyone? And the second one, Nana, there are several questions that were asked, which have to do with the role of schools on the promotion, on the adoption and promotion of uh, playtime, you indicated that, that this is not 
something that should be restricted or limited to the school system. And you mentioned other institutions and spaces where, where playtime has to take place. But reflecting on the fact that uh, it is good, I'm, I mean, the, we need to have a lot of people from the educational sector, we need to give them the opportunity to determine if there are some uh, thoughts around these uh, questions on how can we best incorporate uh, the playtime and the school system. So those are two questions, the change of culture and, uh, and the adaptation uh, within the school system. I don't know who would like to start. I think uh, Tatiana is moving there and I see that she wants to speak. Thinking of the first question on the cultural change, Connie pre uh, presented uh, some of those uh, difficult uh, imaginaries that we have in Colombia that we, uh, where we may uh, 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 associate playtime with leisure time and uh, the, the, ha the bigger the kids are, uh, the they educators uh, think uh, that, they, that they shouldn't be playing. So these are cultural uh, barriers, uh, something that we've been learning in our work uh, is how can we change those cultural barriers with, with strategies from, from topics that could be of common interest? For example, the socio-emotional uh, wellness uh, after the pandemic, all the different parents, all the different uh, schools are interested in that. So how can we leverage positively those those uh, important issues that, uh, for example, the, the emotional wellness of kids or of children to to benefit from the from the playtime opportunity. So that's one way how we're working to to determine these ideas and this imaginaries of uh, the playtime as something of that that involves leisure uh, more targeted to a national relevance of, uh, topic. Costanza. Well, we have we have had some thoughts about this, and what we've seen so far is that a cultural uh, topic ha it requires decades. This is not something that changes overnight, and uh, we start uh, from very young ages to to have these possibilities of change. But this also requires the adults and and caretakers to have different um, different education. This has changed with the roles, uh, depending whether you're uh, male or female. We need to change this culturally because it's been seen that they tell kids uh, you get the boys play with cars and and girls play with dolls. And from we are we are given dolls uh, when we are girls and the whole kitchen set so that we can um, know that the, that the kitchen is ours and 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 that the and that the the car um, is is only. Uh, only pertains to, to men. So this is something that we need to propose from the different settings, from the different schools. And I'm going to address a little bit, we can talk about this later, but from the different schools and all the different, uh, where we see uh, parent schools, so it is important for them to provide some uh, guidelines. Um, the playtime is such a nice time that you can spend with your kids. And, and at times, those of you who cannot uh, uh, manage frustration when you play, that's something that's another possibility. So you can control the different emotions and you can learn from others. So from school and from different uh, settings, we need to have this type of changes and these strategies of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of guidelines so that we can see this as an important right in and in the development of that human being that is uh, growing. And as Tiana indicated, uh, this is not for the only for the early childhood. This is uh, for all ages. We can all learn through uh, through play uh, time activities. So, and and I think that and. 
not only the schools are the ones who can do it through the different uh, uh, parent schools. I don't know who you, how you call it in different countries, but the media can also have a, a very important role. And uh, and to be honest, through the media, we can do so nice, so many nice things of citizen pedagogy to show differently how take how how playtime takes place, what this means. This is the first thing that we learn to do. So. So I think that that could be. Let's let's talk about the same on the same language, uh, and it's that the cultural change is coming from the basis, and this is something that we need to do from the different levels and environments to make so that we uh, so that we can reach a similar conclusion. I think uh, it is important to. To mention that uh, that the learning through uh, through the playtime should become massive. I mean, uh, at times we we uh, uh, speak among the different uh, experts, and and I think that this is something that has to be. Uh, we should we should uh, we should communicate this massively in other spaces this is not something that should require a very significant uh, expertise to know it what we dream uh, at the at the movement of suma del juego we want to have a lot of people who are well versed and and they and we want people to demand uh, for this to happen so we need to achieve massive uh, we need to involve new audiences we need to uh, refer to parents, to caretakers, and that for that purpose, uh, the educational centers are the anchors that can actually lead with transformation, and we can and they can demonstrate demonstrate the the learning through the game time. But we can also have a lot of allies uh, in the different social networks, uh, among the different journalists, uh, digital platforms, and even in the in the commercial platforms. So we believe that we need to bring allies and uh, different allies to this movement and, and making sure that this uh, conversation takes place in different uh, forums and that um, many more can become familiar with the benefits of the playtime in the education develop and development of children. So I think that the invitation is those of us who are aware of this topic, who let's work together on the one hand and then on the other, and we need to add many more who are not part of the of the work, and that way we can make this uh, um, a more massive aspect. That way we can achieve a cultural change. And I think it is also important to mention that from the government we can we can do uh, leadership processes to include many many actors within and outside, internal and external to the to the educational system and and i think that this is a, this is a this is a multi actor exercise where many of us need to work and to establish joint objectives in order to make sure that these gets to different places and based on this last point that you just mentioned there's a question from the audience what are your recommendations to achieve an articulated uh, job among the, among the different organizations working around the playtime, you stated the, ne the need. What would you prioritize in terms of achieving, achieving this uh, joint work? I think the joint, the joint work is one of the challenges that we have in the country, not only in, in the learning uh, through playtime, but in the different fronts. From uh, Mobilizatorio, we, what we have learned is that first, uh, you need to know who are your allies. Uh, you need to generate trust among the different allies. So all the work of uh, knowing each other, having uh, holding a lot of uh, work meetings now that we're not only uh, doing virtually, perhaps having a coffee, we need to establish these uh, relations of trust. And I think that this is essential. And then uh, to start identifying how can we add to each other and how can, how can we, by uh, joining efforts, uh, get further. There are many initiatives that we have found in the mapping which are very different uh, from in the different regions um, from uh, even in the cities and there is a wealth in the ecosystem 
So what Tati mentioned about the need of how holding events that uh, will allow us to meet in the ecosystem, to have to go to events uh, where we can present the, the work, uh, generate discussions around the work that we that we've done, and and we believe that we believe on citizen mobilization, and we believe that establishing those ambitious uh, targets and understanding that there's a role that we have in the movement. I think this is essential. So. That's where we see that there are opportunities to do major campaigns and, and to the manager knowledge, create events, uh, conducting incidents, campaigns, and to work with the public sector to implement what they're suggesting and uh, sharing the results of the different investigations. So basically like having a, a very, uh, uh, what interesting ecosystem that will uh, promote the uh, relations of trust and to establish uh, joint strategies. So I think that's one of the that's uh, one of the, the 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 joint work that we have conducted. So coalitions are important, and to be patient to look at the results because at times when, when we work together, we are slower, but we go farther. So I think that this is part of having this culture of seeing the benefit of working collect collectively. Juliana said pretty much everything, but I want to reiterate two messages that she said. On the one hand, we need to identify what are we doing, uh, each one of us, because as they indicated uh, there, we have many, many entities, but we're not all, we're not doing all the same thing at the same time. So, uh, so the idea is to add, if you know a topic, you can share your knowledge. So what we normally do, we try to evidence what we're seeing with the guarantee of a right, which is the playtime, in order to, to get to those who can change it, those who can, those who can change this reality through the public policy. So it is important to know who is targeting at, at what so that we can all together uh, determine the role that we have and that way we can agree uh, on the requirements. And as Juliana mentioned, uh, I think that coalitions and joint work is not easy all the time, but it's doable and this is something you can get to a, a target that, that, that you cannot do by yourself if you add efforts, if you join efforts, and if you add uh, to everything, we can actually make sure that we can do much more. So it is important to work together so we can do things or achieve things together. So I was, I, was, uh, I was looking at the chat and I want to, there are two topics that I would like to cover. I don't know if Tatiana wants to add something, something else or no. I think uh, I think uh, Holly and Connie. There is one question that has to be uh, responded by Constanza, but just to the coordination and the articulation. This is uh, something that you just mentioned implicitly there is a need to work with actors that will typically or do or who are not seen typically as a, a party that is complying a role in the agenda you spoke about the the media and that requires expanding networks beyond the natural allies there's a, a good question that that we received that reminds us that next year in Colombia, there will be presidential elections. And it's um, how can we bring this conversation uh, to the candidates and to the new uh, politicians? Uh, perhaps uh, you have something else to say. Uh, Costanza, is there anything you wanted to share? Well, I wanted to mention before responding to this question, there are two things that I saw in the chat that are really important and that uh, I want to address. Somebody said, how important will it be for schools to have uh, playgrounds or just like that, there are uh, libraries, these are, these are playgrounds. Uh, there, how do we need to think of a new school because we're not going back to the same type of education because we know that we have to go back and forth. 
major changes have been done, especially the structural changes that have been done in the education. And, and, and it would be good to have a, a playground. Something else that was mentioned uh, about and based on what Juli said that, that let's not, that let's let's talk to the experts, uh, other type of experts and experts are the children and the, the teenagers. They have a lot of knowledge of the different type of uh, games and, and, and games change. So we, this is, a, this is a principle for us. We have uh, the right to participation but that are in, uh, works and we try to make this effective in order to uh, determine what is that we have to do. So I fully agree with what was mentioned. And to the question, we started to do our work uh, with the different uh, candidates. We we have uh, like uh, 45 pre-candidates uh, uh, for the presidency next year. So we started to do a series of uh, meetings and mobilizatorio uh, is doing something uh, similar in the case of Niñas Ya. We met uh, with their programmatic uh, teams, those who are responsible for, pre for preparing the, the government programs to determine which are going to be registered. Our elections, the first round will be in May. So we are providing this evidence. We're providing this uh, information that we shared with you. We're starting to give these candidates the information, but next year we're going to have a meeting with the candidate, the, family, the final candidates, and, and we will invite them to the different spaces where we will show uh, the playtime as a right and the evidence that we showed that, these, that it is um, underestimated and vulnerated because we need to go beyond. I think that uh, with these, I'm responding to this question. No, just a second. There was another part to the question. And, uh, and when they are elected, what, what, with the elected party, we, we provide the information as well to the different teams that are responsible uh, for the process in the, in the development of the National Development Plan. This plan is uh, developed on the on the on the second semester of 2022. The Congress is the one that approves this uh, national development plan. We'll have a process of incidents so that we can advocate for these uh, topics during the process that I just mentioned. So this is something that we do from the moment they are pre-candidate, then candidates, and then with um, with the winner. To honor about to honor the collaborative approach, we have been we have been working together the three of us in terms of incidents uh, since Constanza, uh, as indicated by Constanza, we have been creating uh, several uh, meetings with the different candidates through a through a very new format. And so that uh, to make sure that they sit down with the youth and that way they can present the proposals uh, for the different parties in that way. And this has been applied to several topics of childhood education and other topics that are of concern uh, for the youth uh, at this time, for example, environment and democracy. And, but this has been an open space of dialogue uh, where they have expressed a lot of their concerns and also the, the specific proposals they have. So I want to highlight that that there's been, we've seen uh, social emotional skills and also mental health. They have been part of the topics that are not necessarily included in the agenda of the candidates and it has to be included. And that's uh, where we want, uh, we want this uh, playtime learning to, to help uh, strengthening these uh, skills among children and adolescents. And this is, this is not something known to all the different programmatic teams. Uh, and we are studying with candidates, but we're establishing an, a joint agenda to add our efforts for these elections and then for the regional elections that will uh, take place in 2023. So these are different uh, spaces of articulation. So I think that the important thing is to make sure that the candidates will be closer to citizens and, that, and, and to hear the voice apart from the experts 
experts uh, to hear the voices of those who are working in this process. So this is the type of work that we're uh, continuing on the following semester, which will be quite intense in, turn, in, the, in the political panorama in Colombia. Yes, I'm. I'm very pleased uh, uh, for for this question. It was it, what you indicated. It's very interesting. We're running out of time, but I would like to invite everyone to to go over to check the chat because we have had a very interesting uh, comments from the very beginning, following the the conversation, perhaps. Uh, uh, I think I missed uh, some of the comments, but I was in the last minute, I was looking at the different comments of, for example, from Angie Mateus on the initiatives of uh, measurement, that, which are really interesting, which uh, should be considered. And the text that Alejandro Acosta uh, shared which uh, which uh, is uh, which is uh, right uh, presenting interesting topics so what this tells me is that we have identified an important topic a topic where where there's a lot of work to do i think that the two presentations that we heard today uh, are actually are providing an empirical basis of, uh, of our status or the different limitations, but they're establishing the empirical base uh, uh, showing the, uh, the gaps that must be closed. And, uh, and the questions and the comments in the chat do confirm that, uh, that we have a community in Colombia of people committed with a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, and that we need to keep on fitting this exchange coordination. I am very pleased to see that our panelists are already working together uh, on that direction. So to comply with the times, uh, the promise that we normally do in these uh, seminars is that we're not going to, to take away uh, more of your time. I want to invite uh, Diana from uh, who has helped us uh, plan this meeting to, to give us some uh, closing remarks. So on my behalf, I want to express my gratitude to the three panelists and to all of you who, who connected and to, who participated. We would have liked uh, to be in the same room and perhaps have a coffee and keep on talking. But I want to express uh, my gratitude for your presence, your comments, and your support. Diana. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you, Ariel. And thank you, Costanza, Tatiana, and Juliana, to everyone uh, who made this possible. Um, I have a, a lot of, uh, I, want, I must confess that we had a very high expectation with this meeting and I think that we have accomplished it uh, by far. What, what was the expectation as, as indicated uh, to foster these, uh, these uh, conversation around playtime? This is very clear that we're, that we're heading on the same direction to recognize playtime as a right. We have challenges in the short term uh, based on what we're uh, going to be facing. But I think that uh, based on what we're facing, the invitation is to effectively ensure that this is the opening space to keep on building knowledge around playtime, but uh, to debate it. I think that the, we, we miss those debating uh, spaces. If you remember, many of you were part of the discussions that we had when we were and um, when, we were, when we were establishing uh, the basis for the zero to, to, to forever. And, and not only for the conceptual part, but for how, and this is something that has been shown in today's event, how are we in terms of practice uh, to say it that way? How are we materializing? Where are we placing our bets? How are we translating to a certain extent those bets? Uh, the technical bets in practice with children. And I think that there are many topics that that are placed, that are uh, placed on the table to, to keep on building. One is that construction should be 
uh, um, joined and not only from the civil society or the national government, I think that we need to talk all together. There's a, a working niche has been the, the initial, and uh, there are many references. The Ministry of uh, Education and ICBF can, uh, can uh, provide us more information in, 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 in other conversations. Since this is a topic that, that refers to the private part, to the different interrelation among families and, and children, we have other questions, other issues in terms of the of the of the care of children, where where we may provide uh, different types of uh, uh, of uh, of processes when you raise your children. We need to ask ourselves uh, to determine what is it that we're offering to the families from the from our office. We have a, a particular bed which is loving uh, raising plus uh, uh, playing time. There's there's a, a, a profound understanding. This is something, and not only a game is there for in the environment or the public space, but but uh, it is mainly based on these interrelations uh, at the privacy. I have a. Uh, of whom I think that there's a good invitation to keep on discussing or to keep on talking in terms of how is it that uh, we can gather evidence as a country in terms of what this implies or or what is happening in terms of the development of uh, boys and girls when they have the opportunity to play. And I have the, that sensation that uh, as uh, as uh, indicated by Mobilizatorio, uh, we are many, it's many of us working uh, on uh, in favor of the playtime and and I think that um, and I think that uh, we need to meet and we need to keep on debating this because for the for the purposes of addressing the situation with the following government, it is not just to convey this from the speech but from the practice, where where the message of the playtime, as a, the, to the extent it is more consolidated, will be better positioned. It is not just uh, about human talent or teachers or families. They should cover the whole territory. And this is something that we need to keep on uh, addressing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ariel, for making, making this possible. Thank you to all those present. I think that we have the work to delve into this process to uh, to re reconsider what we um, have to address in the following space, and let's uh, let's keep on working, and hopefully we can we can meet sooner so that we can keep on building. Thank you so much, and have a very nice day. Thank you so much, and uh, be attentive. We will let you know uh, about the following meeting in 2022. Greetings and thank you so much. Thank you so much.